Phantom Transformation into the Seeking. Put the Goldeen down. Water Energy. Ripping Horn! Gonna need two big ones. There we go, Seeking! Let's go, Seeking! Let's go! What do Mew VMAX, Duralodon VMAX, and Single Strike decks all have in common? Well, none of them are any match for my amazing Sea King deck. That's right, Sea King from Sword and Shield base set with its ripping horn attack allows you to flip three coins for each heads you discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. It's a ton of fun to run your opponent out of energy and mill them out with this Seeking deck, and I'm stoked to show off my list, but before we get to it, let's head on over to FullGripGames.com. FullGripGames.com is the best place to buy Pokemon trading card game singles and sealed product. We've got super fast shipping and top-notch grading. You really won't find better service anywhere in the industry than at FullGripGames.com. We've also got pre-orders available now for sealed Brilliant Stars products, so make sure to check those out. If you've got some extra cards lying around your house and you're trying to get some cash for them or store credit, we are always buying bulk and singles at Full Grip Games. Selling your extra cards to Full Grip Games directly supports the content I create here on Tricky Gym. Now, let's scope out that Seeking list. Here it is in all its glory, my absolutely broken Seeking deck. Seeking is the main attacker with its ripping horn attack for one water energy, allows you to flip three coins, if you're lucky, you're going to be discarding some energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. If you're not lucky, then we've got Glimwood Tangle, which allows you to reflip those coins if you would like to. So a very good combo there. Seeking also goes really well with Dust Noir from Vivid Voltage and its Spectral Breach ability, which reduces all of your opponent's special energy to just single colorless energy, rendering them almost completely useless, especially in decks like Single Strike decks. Dust Noir is very good against Single Strike, and you might notice that we don't actually have any Dusk Gulls in this deck, just a Dusklops and a Dusk Noir. We're going to be using Zorark's Phantom Transformation ability to transform into various Stage 1 Pokemon throughout the game. We can use Zorark to transform into Seeking right away or into Dusklops to evolve into Dusk Noir. You can even use Zorark to transform into Chinchino if you need a little extra draw power with Make Do or into other utility Pokemon like Altaria with its Miraculous Charm ability, which prevents all damage done to it by Pokemon V, or Gorobis with its Rapid Strike Canceler ability, which completely turns off any of those crazy quick-shooting Intellion that you might be running into. Azumarill is a great resource recovery card in this deck with its dive and rescue attack for one water energy, allows you to put up to three in any combination of Pokemon and supporter cards from your discard pile into your hand. This can allow you to loop resources at the end of the game. Once you got your opponent on the ropes and they are low on energy, can get back very useful cards like Clara or Bruno to help keep you from decking out since Bruno's just gonna have you shuffle to four. Bruno's also great in the middle of the game when your Pokemon are getting knocked out. Bird Keeper, nice little switch card you can recover with Azumarill as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. At the end of the game, once you got your opponent completely locked out, then it's hammer time, baby. You bring out Crabominable and use the trigger avalanche attack to mill your opponent out and you'll never deck out because you've got Azumarill and can loop resources indefinitely. That's it. It's really easy to understand once you actually see it in action. I know there's a lot going on here, so check out the gameplay ahead and let me know what you think of Sea King in the comments below. Now, Mew VMAX. That's what I came here for. Okay. Are you ready, Mew, for what my deck is going to be trying to do? I don't think that you could possibly be ready for what we got cooking over here. Definitely want a Minchino. Definitely wants a Goldeen. Quick ball away the boss. We want the Snorlax. Treat into the Lax and Gorman for five. And then, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's great, great looking turn two hand. They're probably going to pop off, draw like 20 cards, right? Right. Maybe even knock out my Snorlax. Go turn one, at least sparkle. Boom, 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 right? Do the thing. 
And then what's going to happen is I'm going to remove all of their energy, all of it, with Seeking. What I love about playing this deck is that when your opponent plays against Seeking, they are probably thinking to themselves, my goodness, how low has my ELO gotten? That I am now here against this Goldeen deck. Little do they know that this Goldeen deck is about to send them so far into the land of defeat that they cannot possibly return. Okay, two fusion energy on Meloetta. You know what the great thing is? Is that there's no way in our current standard format to recover those energies. So when I evolve into Seeking and remove both those fusion energy, I know that they ain't coming back. They ain't coming back. That's it. Seeking there. Golding. Minchino. Quick ball. Do you think that they'll scoop before I even, like, get to fully set up? That would be sick. Do you think they'll just scoop when they read Ripping Horn? That would honestly bring me a lot of joy. I... Misclick the Zerua, but that's fine. I definitely meant to get rid of the Azumarill. But it's all good. Get this fella. Level ball. Get this fella. Ripping horn. Oh, yeah! Seeking. Let's go, bud. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, so they got to be feeling pretty rough about that. Yeah, it's not ideal if you're a Mew player losing two Fusion Strike energy for a single knockout. Yeah, not great. They've got Elisa Sparkle. They're keeping the pressure on, okay? Switching to Mew VMAX, Power Tablet. They're going for it. Now, what they could do, they could Elisa Sparkle a bunch of times in a row and just keep using Psychic Leap, which would hilariously you know, allow them to keep, but they can only do that so many times. So they're probably not going to do that. Uh, Max Miracle seems more par for the course. So my question is, do you think, do you think that when I remove both of these fusion energy, do you think that my opponent will just simply scoop? when I remove all of those energy from play. All right, let's... Runo for seven big ones. Roll those dice. Okay, we've got the scoop up nets. We've got the Sea King, but I still need an energy yet. Let's go get another Zork. Cool, and we're making do. Let's go. Four more cards. We got the water energy. Beautiful. Exactly what we want. You can make do away the Marnie. And we've got Seeking with the Glimwood Tangle. Two Zoroks on the bench that can also evolve into Seeking. Ripping Horn, looking for two heads. Let's go, Seeking. Let's go. And just like that, all four fusion energy are gone. From the Mew VMAX deck, all they have left now are basic psychic energy, but that is not a concern because I can just remove those two. I can also just start attacking. So many options, right? So many things I can do. So much room for activities. Got two energy in the discard pile. Could be a decent turn to use Kalara. But really, we just wait for them to attack again, right? Yeah, I mean, basically, right? So, I could Clara back, get Zerua, and two energy? That's fine. Zerua and Goldine, two energy. Cool. It's just a good place to be. And pass. 
We just sit here and we await. And if they never attack me, then I just win by a deck out because I will just Bruno, right? We just, we wait for them to attack me, right? Because that's what they have to do. In order to win, they have to take six prizes. I don't have to take six prizes to win. I could just sit here and hang out. Just be vibing, you know? Just have a good time. I am curious if they play any copies of... Uh, whatever that stadium is. Training courts. Yes, they play training courts. Could be big. Go up Zork. And we can phantom transformation into the seeking. Put the goldeen down. Water energy. Ripping horn. Gonna need two big ones. There we go, seeking. Let's go, seeking. Let's go. Insane. There's the training court. This was their plan the whole time. They're like, all right, we're just gonna wait. Eventually. And we'll get the energy back with training courts. Thankfully, I've got the global entangle. So we can do that. Glimwood tangle. Gust up your Mew. Evolve into Seeking. Do it again. Ripping Horn. Excellent. Well done, Seeking. Well done. And there's the scoop, chat. That was satisfying. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was the one. Beautiful. Got a nice opening hand going first. A couple of fellows ready to go. Playing against a single strike deck. You already know what that means. With the single strike deck. Do I know what that means? What what does it mean actually? Alright, let's uh what do we do against the Oh yeah, the Dustnor. That's it. Okay, there he is, right there. Dustnor in the deck. I was like, yeah, you know what that means, right? Right? Right. Yes. No. Um We'll go for that then. That's good. Minchino, since I got two chinchinos in my hand, go there. And pass. So the goal is going to be to try and get a turn to a turn to Dusclops. Wait, can you just all right? So say like if I got a Zorark in play for a turn, right? Can I just so say I've got a say I've got a a Zorark in play for a turn. Then I could turn it into Dusclops and then go straight. No, say it's been in, in play for a turn. No? All right. Still no? Dang it. <laughs> yeah, but what if I like really wanted it to? All right, we're getting Marnie turn one, unfortunately. I didn't read the card, Trevor. I didn't. I didn't read it. Nice. Okay, so all we really have to do is get the Dust Noir out and we win. So that's going to be our primary strategy Yeah, is to attempt to get the Dust Noir out. So we discard the Dust Clops. We've got Clara. Unfortunately, that is not going to get us anything that we need quite yet. I will retreat into Evil Tall and pass. And then hopefully get bailed out of this bad hand quickly. Marnie is always tough for the young control decks, but we do have Chinchino. So can make it work. Now the problem is like what if The problem is, what if 
I get my dust glops out and they gust it. Then I guess I just get dust I get dust glops out again, right? And we keep getting dust glops out because each Zork can turn back into a dust glops, right? So then we just keep doing that until eventually do they just try to double crowbat? Yeah. Dang, bro. I really gotta start winning some games. It's cool. We're on a five win streak, so like, you know, it's we're on our way up. <laughs> I'm climbing the rungs, okay? It just took us a while to get here. At least I can Clara for like water and evil tall and just retreat and wall with it again. That's fine. But eventually we just turn off all of these energy. How many basic energy can they possibly play? Not too many. So I'm gonna give us the old pain explosion. It's fine. Send up Zerua. Nice, level ball. So let's make do and the Gorbis. Okay. A level ball, get Mincino. Energy here, Clara, do both. Gonna get these guys back, that back. Retreats, and pass. And then, oh, the twin would also be kind of hilarious, but yeah, it doesn't really matter because they they play a lot of special energy recovery in this deck, so that's no sweat. The real play is is the dust clops. That's just what we need. So we need to find a draw supporter eventually, and then we're cooking. We just got Marnied into Oblivion, so we're working our way out of here. Eventually, they will knock themselves out. It's kind of fascinating. Nice. So we found another Chinchino. I'm actually going to thin that second Chinchino out of the deck first. And make do. Because I'm looking for a draw supporter, like critically. Yeah. Or anything. So we can at least get a Zorark... And then make do away the Glenwood Tangle, which I don't need quite as much. So we got switch and a level ball. Okay, so we go Zork, level ball. What else can I get? Nice, that could be good. We'll get a Goldeen. Phantom Transformation into the Dusclops. And then pass. And they are going to gust, right? It's fine. We know they're going to gust. They can only do that so many times. And then we just need to keep finding Zoroarks and keep transforming into Dusclops until eventually they cannot do it anymore. I also have a potential possibility to completely remove all the energy from the Gengar with with this card, right? With Seeking this next turn. So it's a possibility. We've gotten a very slow start, but we still have like a very serious chance of winning this game because of how much of a checkmate we can set up. So here comes Goldeen. The Brave. Yeah, I knew it was only a matter of time before we found Bruno, okay? That was, like, bound to happen eventually. You feel me? All right, so now we're going to put them in a tough spot. Okay. Let's make do away that. Make do away that. 
find the Glimwood, transform again to Dusclops. All right, and we rip that horn, Sea King. We rip the horn, Sea King. Let's go. See ya. <laughs> Absolutely insane, broken, unhinged Seeking card. Yo, just discard three. It's basically Lucario Melmetal, dude. It's basically Lucario Melmetal. Absolutely insane. They've got three prizes left to take, but they're not going to be able to take them. No chance. All right, so they can single strike Roar a couple of times, but unless they also have boss this turn, and they've got three boss in the discard pile, three, unless they boss this turn. They got boss number four. That would be sus, but I don't think that they do. There's no way. They're just going to knock out the Sea King. I'm going to promote the Zerua. I think I should have one more Zork in the deck, potentially. Kramomatic. What do you think they're getting? The last boss? That would be kind of like annoying. I'm Arnie, that's fine. I think they're out of boss, genuinely. So all I have to do is Evo incense, this game is over. That's it. Time to get out the crab. Start milling. And it's GG's. So let's see. We got Evil Tall down. We can just make do away the Seeking. There's Zork. Evolution Incense. And we have set up Exodia chat. The Dusk Nor is in play. Let's go. Put down the crab. Phantom transformation. Into this fella. Thank you and or records for the 28 months. Make do one more time. Can even boss. Don't need to. Um, I will. Boss up this guy. Because then I can just dive and rescue. I'm going to start dive and rescue looping. <clears throat> so we're going to get boss Clara. And maybe evil tall is fine. And now we just chill, right? They've got 16 cards left in deck. The dust norm makes it so that their energy provide colorless and have no other effects. They can't even retreat with the Hiding Darkness energy because of the Spectral Breach ability. And they're just stuck. They're stuck. You know, there's not too much else they can do. Their energies, you know, their energy, their attack requirements all take dark, right? So unless they, like, have a basic energy in their deck, they could Darkness Fang maybe, they could... Venomous Fang, maybe. But the Dive and Rescue loop with Azumarill is going to make it so that... Yeah, it's GG's. We can just keep getting our resources back. Yeah, there's a scoop. Mm, okay. <laughs> maybe. I mean, he's kind of a big dude. Playing against Mew 
VMAX, and I open my Evil Tall. They got to be wondering, like, okay, this is uh, it's probably going to get a little ugly, right? But it's fine. We do have Altari on the list right now. I might cut it. It was there as an idea of like a way that you could beat Urshifu decks that don't play water energy because you can you can just get the Altaria out and then you can get the Rapid Strike Canceler out and then they can't do anything to you, right? All right, so they're getting set up real good. Mew down, a couple of Genesects down, another Mew. Looking good. Jenny, Jenny. All right. Draw some more cards. Go ahead. Yeah, put down a few. Sh I dare you to. Just cry of destruction. That's fine. I mean, I guess I might as well. Turn one, force them to use Elisa Sparkle. That's fine. It does put pressure on the resources. Slows them down a little bit. Especially since we, you know, have quite the hand going on. Want to see if we can slow them down as much as possible. Do that. And hope they don't knock out my Voltal this turn. That'd be great. They probably will. But we need to find, like, desperately need something better than the Marnie. Marnie is, like, the weakest supporter in our deck for sure. We have it there more of just like a, you know, to disrupt your opponent's hand than it is to draw cards for us. Just need them to not find an Elisa Sparkle. That'd be great. Unfortunately, though, they're going to get to draw a ton of cards to find one. So, hopefully, they don't have it. This feels eerily similar to hoping that ADP did not have the altered creation. It feels like eerily similar, right? You're just sitting there. Watching them draw cards, draw cards, please. No altered creation, please. Don't do it. They don't have it. All right, they don't have it, chat. Think, got it like that. Let's go. Let's go. They have to boss, which means that I get to cry of destruction again with Evil Tall. Love it. So then. Yes, we are going to potentially boss, stall a little bit. Seeking, level ball, level ball. Going to get us a Chinchino. And now we've got a little bit of space. Just the door is cracked ever so slightly. So now we can stick our foot in. Great. Get rid of that. Juniper, wonderful. We're going to gust. Uh -huh. Actually, I'm not going to gust. We're just going to switch in, in Juniper because I'm trying to see more cards and not get benched out. That's the real the real big one. Yeah, we're trying not to get benched. That'd be great. Um, That's fine. We got a Seeking in the discard pile. Yes, we do. So we'll get that. And then... Cry of Destruction again. And next turn, we've got Bird Keeper. Basic Psychic Energy going down on the Mew. They need to burn cards just to have a shot at finding an Elisa Sparkle so that they can attack. We're saving our stadium just in case they put down a training court or something like that. They do find the Elisa Sparkle finally, so they can accelerate on the Mew, knock out my Evil Tall, which I'm sure has been kind of annoying for them to deal with, right? So there they go, more stuff. What we are aiming for 
is to just find a water energy. I get to see three cards here, two cards here. If we can find a water energy, then I'll have the opportunity to potentially turn my Zorark into a fish. And then, oh, the switching cup. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead, take your card. Keep your secrets. Okay. So we got Chinchino, we got Evolution Incense, we got another, there's the water energy, let's go, dude. Cool, so we're gonna grab this, and I want to thin the deck as much as possible because I need to find basic Pokemon still, right? So that I do not get benched, that would be great. So we'll get Zorak again, Bird Keeper here. We don't find a lot of good basics, unfortunately. Uh, but I can make do away the Azumarill. And we still find no basics. It's cool, really. It's fine. No sweat. Sure, we'll uh, we'll figure it out. Transform into Seeking. Next turn, I can Clara. That's fine. Got that. I can put the Snorlax down. It's kind of just like a buffer. Put this guy up. Get in there, Seeking. Need two heads. Two big ones. Like the opposite of that. Two glorious... Yeah, let's go, Seeking. Let's go, Glenwood Tangle. Insane. So, yeah. Remove those energies. Great. Then, eh, you know, they're probably going to take a knockout on my guy. That is going to be tragic. They've got all four fusion energy in play. There's the training court, though. So that is our enemy, the training court. That thing has got to go, right? Because they can just keep getting basic energy back from the discard pile. So we have used how many Glenwood Tangle? One. All right. So what we can do is, and we got to keep an eye on their switch count too, right? Because eventually we could gust up something and just be a pain that way. Don't want to put down crab yet. That's for sure. We're probably going to end up using Clara for like a couple of Zerua's back. Right. Quick ball. There we go. Okay. Good. Get that. Bruno, four water energy, two Glenwood Tangle left in the deck. Very good. Okay. Um... Clara to do both. Azurua. Let's make do first. That's fine. I do want a Clara and do both. We want to get this guy and this guy. And both those. Make do away the Kerbominable. It's fine. Maybe that was a little... I could have gotten a second Zerua there. Or like a Goldfish or anything. It's fine, though. We're going to pass. And then... I do need to find... Yeah, maybe the Clara there wasn't quite right. Maybe. Fortunately, they don't have another Psychic in the discard pile yet, so the Training Court doesn't really matter right now that it sticks. It doesn't really matter. What matters can make it a little bit difficult on me if they gust my Zerua. That's, like, annoying, but probably fine. I just would really have to find some basics after that. Being low on the basics is definitely... Like, it's been very difficult for me to find my basics this game. I don't know why. Just the Zeruas, really. I thought I had had... The reason I... I thought I had two Zerua in my discard pile for the Clara play, but I didn't. Counter your own training court. That's fascinating. 
cool. That's good. All right, and I just have to knock out my Snorlax. It's great, because now I can go up with Seeking again. So here we go, Zerua. Fortunately, did not get gusted. There's another Zerua. I knew, like, I knew they were right there, dude. I knew it. I knew it. Get rid of Gorbis. Okay. Make do. Get rid of another Seekings. Fine. Ah, uh, I mean, okay, it's fine. Phantom transformation. Get your boy. Seeking. I'm gonna need two heads, bud. Let's go, Seeking. Let's go, bud. Good job. <laughs> Good job, Seeking. You did it. Yay. <laughs> you did it so good. All right, then get back one energy at a time now, right? One, one at a time. And they can manually attach, as we see that they're doing. So... That's like fine. You can boss all you want. Doesn't matter. That actually helps me in a very funny way. Well, here's the Glenwood Tangle. So I doubt you have more than two training court, right? And then what I can do is let's see, make do away. I should have make do and then training. It's fine though. It's not gonna matter. All right, get these, go there. Make do away. The Zork. Okay, there's another Zerua. Great. Check this out. Scoop up net this fella. Go here. Zark. Phantom transformation. This guy. Good. And then pretty much in rock and roll territory here. One more Zerua. Cool. And we start looping. Dive and rescue. We can go get boss boss Clara. Cool. So that now, like if you try to build up anybody on the bench, I could just gust them out. I could probably just gust all your Genesect for the rest of the game to be completely honest. Now that we got Azumarill here, go get yourself another Psychic. It's fine. You probably don't play a third training court. Nobody does. Except for one guy earlier I played today. We're not going to talk about that. I still have a third Glimwood Tangle in my deck, even if you do play a third training court, which I doubt you play. All right, there's the double Psychic. There's no way they have a third training court. No way. Even if they do, I still got a Glimwood in my deck, so it doesn't really matter. With the Clara in my hands, we can Gust, or we can uh, we can retrieve the Zoroks that I need, right? We can get Zoroks back, and then with Zorok, I can turn into Fish. And then once I have Fish, I can remove all the energy and deck you out. And the thing about Azumarill is that Azumarill just keeps looping itself too because if you knock out Azumarill I could go up again with Zorak turn into another Azumarill and keep getting more stuff which is like really fun super cool they've only got 10 cards left in deck I'm gonna max miracle knock out my Azumarill I'm gonna rip both these energies away they didn't counter my Glenwood Tangle 10 cards left two prizes left to take I think we're chilling I think so think so maybe gotta flip some heads though seeking so let's do it do both we're gonna get double zork okay we're gonna get double water we're at the point in the game where we don't need to draw anymore i'll make do sure that that's fine the Bruno helps us to not deck out, which is sick. Cool, we like that. We like that. Ripping Horn need two big ones, Seeking. Let's go. 
I'm chilling. There we go. Mu V Max, no energy. Seeking. Absolutely killing it out here. Let's take a look at that energy count. That is four fusion strike energy, two psychic energy in the discard pile. At most, maybe they got one more psychic left in deck. They might try me and say, okay, like, sure, but how do you win? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I meant to pierce. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to pierce there. So here's what we're going to do. Because I'm sure you're curious, how do we keep this loop going? What do we do, right? So what we do, I was going to pierce there for 50, but I'm going to transform back into the guy, right? Azumarill, right? You transform back into Azumarill, use Azumarill to loop Clara, right? And then we could loop Clara. And now that we're looping Clara, you're gusting. You're on the... You think I ain't got it like that. You think I'm not prepared, huh? Okay. So... Quick ball on energy away. Fail it. Phantom Transformation. Energy Assist. It's fine. Accelerate on the Azumarill. <laughs> and then... Now, this, this deck here, some, somebody random on... Somebody random on... Uh, on Twitter DM'd me a deck that involved using Orbital and uh and Crabominable and in our you know kind of fun doing that I have since turned it to a Crabominable deck featuring Seeking uh which has you know it has changed quite a lot yeah, so then we go Azumarill. We get all the cards we need to mill them out. And that's how we win, right? That's how we win. Because we know that they have six energy in the discard pile. They can't possibly recover them. I've got Bird Keeper that I can loop with Dive and Rescue to be able to switch again. I've got Bruno so that I can actually go in and uh, stop myself from decking out if I need to. Plenty of options. I think we're going to dive and rescue one more time just to really drive the point home. Yeah, let's get these guys. Just a bunch of geezers. Yeah, get a bunch of geezers back. It's cool. Then I'll attach to the Azumarill Clara, get all the energy back from my discard pile, absolutely everything. And... Uh, and we just win. Yeah, it's that easy. It's that easy. So let's uh, attach our second energy here. Let's Clara do both. Get these guys. That energy back. Cool. Dive and rescue. Get the Clara back. Just so, like, there's absolutely no way I can lose, right? At this point, we have pretty much packed it up. And then, to seal the deal, we've got the crab. For the last couple turns of the game. Just to make sure that, like, we could do this forever, but the crab helps speed it up. That's why the crab's here. Because, honestly... There they go. See ya. And that's it for my busted Sea King deck. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash tricky gym, where I stream live Pokemon trading card game content just like this every single weekday. Y'all have a busted day. Peace.